So let's talk about this overall, Stephen A. Uh, what do you make of everyone playing in Cleveland with LeBron? Well, listen, he's not only the greatest player in the world, he's incredibly unselfish. And because he's unselfish, anytime you're a superstar and you're unselfish, people want to play with you. That's a given, okay? Um, but he'd take it a step further. If you know LeBron and his personality, if you remember back in the day, the kind of things we used to chide him for where they were spaining like they were taking pictures with one another and all of this other stuff, and people alluded to that being an impediment to him ultimately capturing championships, the one thing that was undeniable, even in the midst of all of the skepticism and criticism it created, was that guys who played with him loved playing with him and they loved being around him. And when you have that going on, it speaks volumes about not just you as a player, but your character as a basketball player, as a supreme athlete on this level. It just does. When you look at a Kobe, this is, this is, this is the greatness of LeBron. It's going to also make you question Kobe and why people didn't come to L.A. to play with him. It's going to make you question Melo and why, you know, guys weren't willing to take the veteran minimum to come play with him in New York. It's going to make you question other folks. Uh, and that's just the way that it goes. Uh, I don't know how fair that is to them, but it's definitely going to provoke those questions. In the end, what it comes down to is simple. LeBron is the greatest player in the world, but by and large, he's also considered one of the greatest people mm. that they've ever played with. You listen to the Ray Allens of the world, and you listen to teammates like the Dwayne Wades and the Chris Bosh and others. These guys love them. They love them as a person, not just as a player. So whatever he's doing, it's something right, and it's undeniable because there's been plenty of superstars throughout the course of NBA history that guys have profound respect for and, 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 and deified and, and, and viewed as iconic figures but they couldn't stand them at the same time. That doesn't appear to be the case with LeBron James wherever you go. Go to Cleveland, go to Miami, circ you know, circulate around the NBA and talk to guys who've been around him and know him. And they will tell you they've got an incredible amount of affection for him. So you got to tip your cap to, it, to him on that level and, and give props where it's due. So what is your opinion of what this says? about Kobe and Carmelo? Well, my opinion is, is that they're shooters. I don't think as people, they're viewed, well, Kobe's a little bit different because Kobe, I don't want to say a recluse, but Kobe ain't the most inviting brother in the world. Sometimes, I mean, I find Kobe to be one of the coolest and most real brothers you will ever find. But there are people, he's a closed book yep. to a lot of people. Melo is every bit as welcoming, as inviting, as personable as LeBron. The difference is Melo's a scorer. Yeah. LeBron is all-purpose. He's a distributor, what have you. So I think that in, in, in comparison with a, a Melo or a D-Wade compared to a LeBron, I think it's more about basketball, whereas with Kobe, it's the combination of basketball and then the personality. He's a, a, he's a bit aloof. He's a bit distant. It takes Kobe's an acquired taste. Uh, he's a good brother to me, but he's an acquired taste. Everybody does. Everybody doesn't flow with the flavor yep. that Kobe brings. I, it's just I the hear way it you. is, and he don't care. Uh, he and doesn't he doesn't care. care. I agree. I personally like Kobe very much. I like Melo very much, but I agree with your assessment. And and I remind you, I don't need to remind you that they will vie next year for who takes the most shots in the league, maybe with Russell Westbrook in the mix, because. They're going to shoot their shots. Mm -hmm. And a lot of players don't love playing with a guy who, who they consider ultimately is a little ball hoggy, a little bit like it's him or bust. And yet, <laughs> to me, Stephen A., I, I keep hearing one guy after another sign with the Cavs. They're, they're going to Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> they're not going to South Beach. They're not going to Los Angeles. They're not going to New York. They're going to Cleveland, Ohio. And I start thinking, did the NBA waive the Cavs salary cap? So, yeah. so they just said, we want LeBron to have the most loaded team in the league. So whatever you guys want to do, just keep signing them. Th then I look at what Sean Marion signed for. 
He's going to make $1.4 million to play in Cleveland, Ohio, when he made last year nine point three million to play for the Mavericks. Wow, that, that's, hey, you're swallowing a lot of uh, sacrifice there. That, that's a lot fewer dollars than you, now he's made supposedly $130 million for his yeah, career, so. so I hope he saved it. But, but Stephen A., I, I start looking at this lineup now, and I say, is it better than the Spurs? No, it's not better than the Spurs. Is it better than anybody in the East, including the Bulls? I think now you would have to say yes, because if you start LeBron, Kyrie, Kevin Love, we assume Kevin Love will be there, and I'll throw in Tristan Thompson and Berjao in the starting lineup. Then off the bench, you're coming with waiters, obviously, and then your veterans, Mike Miller, Sean Marion, Ray Allen. I'm assuming Ray will ultimately sign with them. James Jones and Brendan Haywood. Wow, that's pretty good. I, now you've got a basketball team, a deep basketball team, and I, I don't see anybody in the East being able to contend with this team. Are you, are you with me? No, I'm not. Um, I watched Derrick Rose with USA Basketball this weekend. Just seven so points. Um, only, only attempted five shots. The speed, the quickness, the athleticism and agility, the command, the presence on the floor. If Derrick Rose stays healthy, Skip, keep in mind the man played 10 games in the last two years. He's rife with rust, and this is how he's looking. Now, granted, it's against Brazil. It's not against NBA competition, meaning, you know, on a, on a night-in, night-out basis. But I've seen enough of Derrick Rose to know that what we've seen from Derrick Rose is what we can fully expect to see from Derrick Rose if he's healthy. And I'm telling you, the acquisition of Pau Gasol mm. with a healthy Derrick Rose, and you didn't lose Joakim Noah, you didn't lose Todd Gibson, you didn't lose Jimmy Butler, you, you didn't lose Coach Tom Thibodeau. I got news for you. The Chicago Bulls are not a team to be ignored. Cleveland is definitely the favorite, but I'm telling you, you know defensively Chicago can give you problems. And offensively, they've never had anything in the post. Gasol can put up 18 to 20 a game for you in the post, Skip. And we know what Derrick Rose can do. Now, I'm not wait, dismissing wait. Chicago out. by out. any stretch. Time out. Are you leaping to a conclusion uh -huh. about Derrick Rose off a game against Tiago Splitter's team? Mm -hmm. No, no. I'm leaping to a conclusion about Derrick Rose based on my ability to see him run up and down the court, meaning his health. That's all I'm concerned about with Derrick Rose. I have no concerns about Derrick Rose's game. Zero. All I care about with Derrick Rose is his health. If he is healthy, Cleveland will not walk over Chicago. There you go. I don't. Cleveland will be there the favorite, go. but they will not walk over Chicago. And he's not they playing. Not when, he, when he points like that, he's serious. They won't do it. Okay, Skip, you got it? I'm, I'm on LeBron's side, as usual. As usual. Oh, once again, defending LeBron. Okay. Yeah. Um, 